Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for Boxing News and Views from around the internet. Deontay Wilder has emerged from seven to eight months of relative silence to come out and criticize Tyson Fury, but not just that. He's made a series of bold claims, some which are almost unbelievable for a professional boxer to do. You can understand Deontay Wilder's fan base making sorts of claims to explain away a loss from Deontay Wilder, but some of what we're about to get to is actually rather incredible for a professional boxer with any degree of IQ to come out with. So what I'm going to do is get to the clip that Wilder has put out on social media, and then we will get to the post that accompanies it, because more claims are being made here. Deontay Wilder says, you're being a coward, you've moved on from this fight, you need to fight me. But first, the first series of claims which has uh, religious overtones from Deontay Wilder in this two-minute clip. The Bible tells us that silence is gold. But my ears can still hear and my eyes can still see. The Bible also tells us to be swift to hear and slow to speak. You see, what you don't understand, thief, what you did is what my people deal with all the time. Someone cheating them from providing their greatness into the world. But it's a burden that we cut off only to make us stronger. I saw in the first fight where Ricky had him was pulling down your gloves to put your fist in the improper position. Y'all tried the same method the second time, but this time you scratched flesh out of my ears, which caused my ears to bleed. It's impossible for a brand new 10 ounce glove to bend to keep a smushed in form or to have loose space. I highly believe you put something hard in your glove, something the size and the shape of an egg weight. Here's the reason why the side of my face swelled up in an egg weight form. And it left a dent in my face as well. <laughs> but in the midst of it all, you still couldn't keep this king down. You would have had to kill me. In the end, it took a crab in a bucket referee and a disloyal trainer to throw the towel in just to stop me. <laughs> Proverbs the sixth chapter 30, 31 says, excuses may be found from a thief who steals because he is starving. But if he is caught, he will have to pay back seven times what he stole even if he had to sell everything in his house. So there is a bunch to unpack from that, but what we're going to do first is get to the post which accompanied that video. And I guess if you're a Deontay Wilder fan, um, you may not like some of what my analysis is after I get through this, because I think some of what he is saying, and especially in what's also to come here, it doesn't actually gel with reality. Wilder has not come to terms with this loss, but also it's severely embarrassing some of what we just listened to. Embarrassing. Clearly, he has not recovered from the autopsy that his brother claimed he underwent. But Deontay Wilder says, For Gypsy King 101, it is time for you to be a man and honour your agreement. What is this BS of you fighting Carlos to calm instead of me? You got to be kidding. When we were going through your darkest time, I told you that if you got yourself together, I would give you a title shot. Being a man of my word, I gave you that title shot. When that fight was a draw, I told you that I would give you a rematch. You know I was offered more money to fight Joshua than I was getting to fight you. Again, being a man of my word, I fought you. Like I said, I would. In the rematch agreement, there was a rematch clause. Now it is time for you to be a man and honor your word. Instead of trying to weasel out of the agreement, scared people run, but a scary man will break his contract. You coward ass. And I won't say the last word, and then a bunch of hashtags. So, Deontay Wilder, on the rampage. Um, so, that post, there's a bit more of a sort of edge to it than the video, but the video probably um, actually contains the greater and more sig significant claims against Tyson Fury. So, what I'll just do is I'll just run through what we heard in that clip. So, he said you have to be swift to hear 
bit slow to speak. So he is talking about um, his absence and his silence with all that's gone on in recent months since his devastating loss against Tyson Fury, where he was stopped in seven rounds and beaten up in the process. But the main accusations here, he is saying that Tyson Fury tampered with the gloves in both fights. He said that he had something hard in his gloves the size of an egg weight, which apparently accounts for the dent on Deontay Wilder's head. So that dent on his face is still apparently there. He said that you can't kill me and that the referee was a crab in a bucket, that he had a disloyal trainer and he's referring to Mark Breland who is no longer working with him, that payback is coming. There was obviously religious overtones in the way that message was delivered, that whole two minute um, spiel, but that um, Tyson Fury in the post has to honor his agreement and fight him. Scared people run. He calls Fury a coward. And that is Deontay Wilder's response after having had nothing in public for several months and obviously the last couple of weeks with Tyson Fury declaring that he was going to be walking away and clearly I mean this whole sort of situation has been a bit strange and bizarre the pandemic the fight getting pushed back you know some of these um, fan theories that had been running around about the gloves some which emerged a year after or 18 months after that first fight so Deontay Wilder is completely going and drinking the Kool-Aid to and on these conspiracy theories he clearly has not um, accepted that he lost and that he was beaten on the night by a better fighter who pretty much from the get-go dominated him. And Deontay Wilder is saying a number of things here and you'd have to imagine that some of this you know, potentially could end up in court. There is some scope for that. He is accusing Tyson Fury of cheating in both fights with the gloves, saying that he loaded the gloves with something the size of an egg weight. And there's a couple of things with that, because one, he is saying that um, the Nevada Commission for those both fights did not do its job. Also, he is throwing shade at his own corner, because they had a representative in Tyson Fury's dressing room for both fights to watch Tyson Fury get his hand wrapped, but also for the gloves to go on, to be inspected, all that sort of stuff. And the Nevada State Athletic Commission was there observing as well, and they signed off on the wraps and all that sort of stuff. So he's saying the commission didn't do his job, but also specifically, and I believe it was JD's for both times, that D's did not do his job. So, you know, in the process of trying to sort of say others have actually... Um, sort of wronged him here he's kind of also Im implicating his own camp his own corner which was there watching the hands getting wrapped and the gloves you know and s seeing them being inspected going on and the referee obviously also checks those gloves my view on the whole glove thing that it's just a red herring that this is desperation from fans trying to make out that Deontay Wilder you know lost because of some other reason other than that he was not good enough and the whole first fight around the gloves thing didn't come out till after the second one. So why that gap? But also, why has Deontay Wilder waited months and months and months to come out with this sort of stuff? And why has he waited a couple of weeks to address Fury moving on and potentially facing a Carlos to come or someone else on December 5th, 2020? It is clear he hasn't accepted the loss. But it's also clear he's buying into the conspiracies, he's trying to play to his own fan base, and a lot of people will say, well now that Tyson Fury has declared that he's moving on, that Deontay Wilder is piping up, coming up with this sort of stuff, because it is sort of part of what he's done in the past, where other fighters have had not had fights, but as soon as they've moved on, he has sort of said something in public. So there will be people saying that. But also with this, going on with all these um, excuses still, the gloves. He's saying it was his disloyal trainer. It's the referee. Everyone else is to blame here except Deontay Wilder. Clearly has not accepted the loss. And this is the only thing that hasn't sort of really been mentioned here by Deontay Wilder in the post or the video was that 40 pound costume, which was blamed to some extent for weakening his legs. That was embarrassing enough. But now he is also buying into all these conspiracy theories that have been pushed by some of his fans for months. Honestly, this is seriously embarrassing. And I know some people will be saying, oh, well, there's some evidence and truth to it. But my view of some of all this sort of stuff is it's not that. It was clear what happened on the night. He wasn't good enough. He got beaten. As for Tyson Fury moving on, I mean, I had wondered, is there going to be some sort of form of legal action or something like that? Was, you know, he going to be forced to, to go through with that? But from what we've been told, the agreement for them for the third fight has expired. 
so there was no obligation, at least contractually, for Tyson Fury to go through with the third fight. Maybe you could argue because there was obviously a contract for a third fight and there was whatever they were going to do it. You could argue that maybe Tyson Fury should honor that, but if he's not, well, he's not. And they could have, on his end at least, on Deontay Wilder's end, Shelley Finkel, his co-manager, why didn't they strap this down, nail the fight to the floorboards, and it could have been done or it could have been organized? I mean, we're hearing that from the Wilder side, that some of it was part of the delay. They wanted to push it out to 2021, giving top rank the ability to actually just move on. And this is what's happened. So some of this, I'm sure people will say that Deontay Wilder is saying all this, but did he really want to go through with the third fight? But he's saying he's been left with a dent in his head. So, you know, obviously we'd heard from his brother Marcellus Wilder that there'd been an autopsy, but he's now recovered sufficiently apparently from that to deliver what is quite an incredible sort of rant regarding conspiracy theories, which he is buying into, that the gloves were tampered with, that they were loaded that um, the referee was a crab in a bucket, so he's saying that he was incompetent, that a disloyal trainer also led to the loss, but apparently payback is coming. I was sort of caught off guard by some of what was in this. I mean, largely, I expected there would be something with a sort of a, a rant at some point, but this was well beyond what I was expecting. And it was more the manner in which it was delivered in. Some of the claims I was thinking would be made, but obviously he's kind of bought into most of the conspiracy theories, and it's uh, blaming everybody except himself. And if, and if he can't ever look at himself and be honest and say, I wasn't good enough on the night, I need to make improvements... You know, he's never going to accept that loss. But also, we're going to have divided fans now, some on Wilder's side, backing up this view. They've been waiting for Deontay Wilder to say these things. But on the other side, and other boxing fans who've been laughing at some of the excuses, are just going to be, this is another excuse. This is embarrassing, and that this is, you know, ridiculous. And, you know, I try to keep things as even as possible across my channel with fighters and all that sort of stuff, and in the coverage that I give them and how I treat it. But I have to say, this is completely ridiculous. I'm sorry, but it is. Some people won't like that, but this is ridiculous. Deontay Wilder is not doing himself any favors here. He's just playing to his fan base, but apparently he's not playing to reality. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.